What if the next global threat isn't something new, but something very old? Something that's been frozen beneath our feet for tens of thousands of years, waiting. This is not the beginning of a science fiction movie. This is what real scientists are uncovering right now in the melting permafrost of the Arctic. And what they're finding is terrifying and fascinating all at once. Ancient viruses, dormant for millennia, some dating back nearly 50,000 years. And now they're waking up. Welcome to Planet Cookie. Today, we dive deep into the chilling truth of the so-called zombie viruses of the Arctic and ask, are we ready for what's coming out of the ice? Let's start at the top. What exactly is permafrost? Permafrost is ground that's been permanently frozen for at least two consecutive years. But in many cases, it's been frozen for tens of thousands of years. We're talking about the same layer of Earth that once buried mammoths, saber-toothed cats, and prehistoric forests. But now, because of accelerating climate change, this ancient deep freeze is melting. And with it, strange things are emerging. In 2022, a group of French scientists led by Professor Jean-Michel Clavery revived a virus they found in Siberian permafrost. It was called Pandora virus Edoma, and based on carbon dating, it had been frozen for about 48,500 years. Let that sink in. This virus is older than human civilization itself. It predates agriculture. It predates writing. It even predates Homo sapiens in most parts of the world. This virus was no longer just a fossil. It was alive. Now, before you panic, Pandora virus Edoma only infects amoebas. It poses no direct threat to humans. But that doesn't mean we're safe. Because what this discovery really tells us is simple and terrifying. Viruses can survive frozen for tens of thousands of years, and when thawed, they can become active again. That opens the door to a very important and very uncomfortable question. What else is buried in the ice? And what if the next one does infect humans? Let's pause and take a breath. Have you ever heard of Malavirus Sibiricum? Discovered in 2015, this 30,000-year-old virus was also revived from permafrost. It was so large that scientists could see it under a regular microscope. Then there's Pithovirus mammoth, Megavirus mammoth, and the enormous Alpha Pithovirus. All of these viruses are categorized as giant viruses, some with over 2,500 genes. For comparison, the influenza virus has just 10 genes. COVID-19 has under 30. These ancient viruses are genetically complex, physically massive, and biologically mysterious. Even though these revived viruses don't infect humans, the concern is that other pathogens could be hidden alongside them. Viruses or bacteria that once infected prehistoric animals, or even early humans. Let's not forget, in 2016, something like this already happened. A deadly outbreak of anthrax in Siberia hospitalized over 70 people and killed a 12-year-old boy. The source? A reindeer carcass that had been buried for decades in the permafrost. When the permafrost thawed, the anthrax spores were released into the air. That incident proved the point. The past can still hurt us. And anthrax is just one example. Many bacteria are known to form spores, dormant, shielded versions of themselves that can survive extreme heat radiation, and yes, thousands of years in ice. In 2021, researchers in Yakutia, Russia, 
discovered a perfectly preserved 44,000-year-old wolf. Its fur was still intact, so were its internal organs. Scientists are now studying the remains, especially the stomach contents, to see what kind of ancient microorganisms might be living inside. And speaking of discoveries, let's talk about glaciers. In 2024, researchers drilling into the Gulia ice cap in Tibet discovered 33 new viral populations locked within ice that had not melted for 15,000 years. 28 of those viruses were completely unknown to modern science. They'd never been cataloged before. Some were still viable. I want you to really think about that. Unknown, ancient, active. So now the question becomes, what's the actual risk? Most scientists agree that the risk of a doomsday virus is low, but not zero. The concern isn't that Pandora virus is going to become the next pandemic. The concern is that climate change is unlocking a biological archive we don't fully understand. In fact, the Arctic permafrost alone contains about 1.5 trillion tons of carbon, methane, ancient bacteria, and yes, countless unknown viruses. Once released, we have no idea how these biological agents might interact with modern ecosystems or with us. Let me ask you, do you think we should continue reviving ancient viruses for study? Or are we opening a freezer that was never meant to be opened? Let me know in the comments below. Now, to be fair, there's a flip side. Some scientists argue that studying these ancient viruses could lead to breakthroughs. For example, analyzing ancient genes might help us better understand antibiotic resistance or give us new tools for biotechnology and medicine. We might even discover viral defense mechanisms that prehistoric life used to help fight modern viruses. Some researchers even speculate that ancient bacteria could help clean up modern pollution through bioremediation. But again, it's a gamble, one with very high stakes. Let me share a quote from Professor Clevery, the scientist behind many of these virus revival experiments. The risk is underestimated. We see these viruses in lab conditions and think they're harmless, but that's not how the world works. When you defrost something that old, you're releasing a biological unknown. That's a sobering thought. Now let's talk about logistics. You might be wondering, how are scientists even able to revive these ancient viruses? It's not easy. First, they extract ice or soil samples with sterile equipment, often while wearing full biohazard suits. Then, they place the sample in controlled conditions, typically in petri dishes containing amoebas, which serve as biological bait. If the virus infects and kills the amoeba, scientists know something is alive in that ice. They sequence the virus's DNA, analyze its structure, and compare it to known viruses. That's how they found that Pandora virus Edoma is unlike anything alive today. Its genome contains no known viral genes. It's completely alien to modern biology. Which begs the question, how many other alien viruses are still out there? And what if one of them doesn't just infect amoebas? One more thing. Some researchers are also looking into ancient RNA viruses, which are even more fragile and prone to mutation. But guess what? Even RNA strands have been found preserved in permafrost. Which means, yes, even coronaviruses, flu strains, or other respiratory pathogens could, in theory, be hiding in ancient ice. We're standing on a biological minefield and the temperature is rising. So what can we do? For one, governments and research institutions need to fund Arctic monitoring systems. We can't prevent permafrost from melting overnight, but we can monitor the release of ancient pathogens and create early warning systems. Two, we need to educate the public. Climate change isn't just about polar bears and rising seas. 
It's about microbes. It's about what's waking up beneath our feet. And three, as curious and driven as science is, we need to approach ancient biology with caution. Because curiosity without caution can lead to disaster. Before we wrap up, I want to hear from you, Planet Cookie Crow. Would you support a ban on reviving ancient viruses? Or do you think science needs to take the risk for the sake of knowledge? Make sure to subscribe to Planet Cookie and hit that bell so you never miss out on the weirdest, wildest discoveries from the frontiers of science. Remember, the past isn't dead, it's frozen, and it might be coming back. Until next time, stay curious and stay cool.